This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. It's a new way of thinking of jujitsu. Click the link in the description and get your copy today. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today we have a special JVOS lecture that I call Thoughts and Feelings. And why do I call it Thoughts and Feelings? Because in jujitsu there are there are some basic ways to make things happen. I want to start discussing other ways that can make things happen, that can generate behavior for an opponent. And the general understanding that I want you guys to take away from this video is that if you make somebody think or feel a particular way, that they're more motivated to behave in a particular way. And, and if you understand what that way is, you can lead the opponent towards their imminent doom, essentially. So let's get started here on this lecture. So I call this one Thoughts and Feelings. There are a few different ways. I'm going to cover four different ways to uh, manipulate opponent behavior. So, of course, we have brute force. Most people or everyone is basically familiar with brute force. This is your the overwhelming nature that you have to implore in order to control an opponent. Now, the problem with brute force is that if the opponent is stronger or has a more substantial force than you, then you start to encounter resistance. And then this resistance leads to fatigue. And eventually, if the opponent uh, has a greater level of brute force, they are able to control and dominate you. The second is reactiveness, and that is when you are able to make an opponent react to a feint, to a setup, to a particular behavior. The third is discomfort. So if you make an opponent uncomfortable, again, you are motivating them or encouraging them to make an adjustment and to move. And again, if you know what that movement is going to be, you can direct them towards their imminent doom. And finally, suggestiveness. And suggestiveness is, is, is very subtle. And that is the ability to make somebody feel and think that what they are doing is the right thing when in reality you are leading them to their doom again. Now, if you notice the colors here, brute force is in red. And what the red signifies is a high energy expenditure, usually uh, through strength and conditioning. That is how brute force is usually implemented. Reactiveness is in orange, which means that less than brute force, but can be a relatively higher level of, of energy expenditure than the last two, which I call discomfort and, of course, suggestiveness, which are in yellow. And both of those um, are lower energy outputs. They're more sometimes creating discomfort over time, which, which we're going to get into here in just a second. So because of the high, uh, because, because brute force is high energy, it also requires generally higher levels of strength. It is generally low, low efficiency. You are forcing the timeline or forcing the movement. Uh, reactiveness uh, is generally relying on speed. It is also low efficiency, but not as, I would consider reactive less low, lower efficiency than brute force, but a higher uh, efficiency than discomfort and suggestiveness. Reactiveness tends to make you start chasing the timeline. Discomfort is of a lower energy. It uses tension over time. So imagine if you if you're hugging an opponent's neck and putting you know pressure with your shoulder on their face and do that for a minute. The discomfort over time can generate the opponent behavior. So I like to use discomfort as uh, tension over time. Discomfort can also help you generate a timeline. Suggestiveness is also low energy. It is guided manipulation. I like to, I like to refer as suggestiveness as a very subtle guided manipulation. It could be both a mental and physical manipulation based on discomfort. So the speed bump concept is when an opponent is, say for example, in a side mount situation and their hands are nice and tight and then you put your body on top of their hands that's going to make their hands want to react and pull out and depending on where you are on top of the hands whether your weight is on this side of the hands on this side of the hands or directly on top um, can you can manipulate their hands to move in particular ways and again i'm just simply using a suggestive you don't have to do what I'm going to do, but I try to make it easier for you to do that 
in order to manipulate your behavior. So I want you guys to start thinking about jujitsu on different on a different level. It's not just simply brute force. There are other ways that you can manipulate people in a way that makes things easier. I think that a lot of times people don't have the subtlety to be able to properly manipulate and help generate the timeline. Rather, they try to overwhelm. There is a lack of what I call fundamental stability within positions. And that that lack of fundamental stability starts to make people very reactive. And again, things start to spur out of control. So that's all I have for this video. I want you guys to start really thinking about how else can we get things done in jiu-jitsu rather than just through brute force. And I can assure you that there are ways that you can do that. Like and share if you like this content. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And I will see you guys next time.